the spirit of Daycroft has a way of entering your heart and from day one when you get it and it never leaves and I will say that that spirit has stayed in my heart for probably now what 40 years long time there really isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about Daycroft and Bill Fisher and Coach Fisher and I mean we called him Coach there are very few times I don't just think about um, the great foundational gifts that, uh, that were given to us by the tremendous self-sacrifice and love of the teaching faculty at Daycroft. I think one of the most powerful things in education is the correct view of the student, is to see the child as being unlimited in potential in every direction. And that's just uh, part of the way Christian science sees man as the child of God, the complete image and likeness of God. And talking about Christian science at the school, it also applied to just about everything in terms of athletics. There was, we never started a game without a metaphysical meeting that the kids would prepare. I'm sure they did the same thing for musicals. Um, I think we tried really hard not to just talk it all the time. That wasn't the purpose, but to try to live it. But, um, but bring it in when it was appropriate for the appropriate times. I just remember the words of one of the students that I had done a lot of uh, work with when I was head. We used to tutor him at night. Uh, we had sort of a little cadre of uh, faculty who would take him uh, and help him with his homework because he'd come to us in great need of being lifted up in his academic performance. And uh, I remember him on this tape that we did uh, at the very end uh, before we closed up. He uh, said, Daycroft is all about love. And the way he said it, you could just feel the kind of love he felt he'd been surrounded by. And the teachers are just what make Daycroft so special. Well, not just the teachers, I think all of the staff members, really. I mean, even if I'd go into the office, there was always such a loving support. And the headmaster, the headmasters at the time, they were two, Trudy Harper was head and, and Bob Clark at the time. And um, you saw them in daily life and, and on the campus. And they were like a, a mentor to you and an example. And it just felt like a really big family. The, teachers were there for you, supportive, well that's all the definitions you think of a, of a positive family model, um, friends, family, love, encouragement. Um, one of the most amazing things that, have, that came out of Daycroft, well I think part of it was the healings that I experienced there. When I was in field hockey, I remember a couple of instances where a girl was going to make a goal and she swung her field hockey stick full force to hit the puck into the goal and my jaw was the receiving end of that. I don't know if you remember that, but I remember all the girls just coming around me from our team immediately and always, you know, a sense of prayer and quiet, but such a sense of focusing on the truth that within, within five minutes I was back on the field playing. And just the immediacy of truth that surrounded you at Daycroft, that was one of the most amazing things. It was really at Daycroft where I got that solid foundation of putting, you know, the metaphysics into practice. And um, that took me into my path of Christian Science Nursing, which I've been doing for almost 25, I guess 24 years. And um, I would say that it began with my home as Daycroft. The examples that the that the teachers set, um, the consistency, uh, everything. Daycroft was absolutely amazing. Well, this was a prep school for life. And it was one that took the kids with money, the kids without money, the middle class kids like myself. I had to be a five-day boarder because I worked in my parents' shop on the weekends. Um, and brought us together to do things we would not normally have done. The short fat kid in the red shorts would not have been on any team in any other high school. I was a, you know, a three letter man. Now, I was even, and Coach Fisher got the biggest kick out of this. My senior year, I'm MVP in basketball. He howled, he thought that was the funniest thing. 
I would never have been in any plays. I, you know, was mostly in the chorus, but I did a lot of background work. I was the property manager for all four productions. I was the comic relief my senior year, and I got to do the Spanish play. All of those things, I would not have done. You did all these things you wouldn't normally have done. Like, I came from a, a public school in the Bronx, and it was quite the culture shock to come into Daycroft in Greenwich, Connecticut. And I begged my parents, because I found just in the few days when we were interviewing to see if I could come, this was where I could be free. I didn't have to worry that somebody wanted to beat me up because I was black or I was white or I was Puerto Rican, which is what they couldn't figure out in, in junior high school. It didn't matter at Daycroft. What mattered was who I was inside. We, we were like totally, we were like our own little wonderful garden of all kinds of different flowers that were allowed to bloom in the same space. And um, that was totally encouraged. It was like we were never shot down for being different from the other kids. I wasn't a real popular, I wasn't like the popular girl in school, you know. We had all the little things that you see on a typical TV high school show where you have the popular girl and you have the sports jock and you have the geeky kid. We had all those things and it was all okay. It was, it was great and we all got along. So it was, I, I it gave me a, a chance to blossom. For me, Daycroft gave me the foundation stones that I needed to carry throughout my entire life. There's not a, a, a time period in my life, any lesson learned, any challenge that I've come up against, that I haven't been able to take one of those stones and make it a part of my bedrock. Everybody here was needed. I think everybody felt like they belonged, they had an important role to play. Even in my own class in high school, we are totally different, all of us, but we all fit. You know, there was all a role for each one of us, and so there is that wonderful sense of being part of a community. And I think the thing that ties it all together is the love, those two things, the individuality, having a, an important place in a community, and then having it, it's all because of love. It's all because of divine love, and that's why it all happened. Not everyone recognizes that, but I think that's what it is. It's the love that we learned from Christian science.